everyone. Um, welcome to our first ever Faith Exploration Sunday School Workshop. I'm sure you are all filled with a lot of questions this week about um, what's going on in the world and the coronavirus and how it affects us. I have lots of questions too. Um, but for right now, we are going to try to continue to live as normally as we can at home. Um, and the great thing is we have technology to help us with that. So um, for this week's lesson, we're gonna be talking about Moses and the Red Sea. Um, we've been talking about Moses for most of the year. Um, we talked about Moses and how he was put in a basket and found by Pharaoh's daughter and how Moses freed the Israelites and the plagues. Um, and it's been an exciting adventure learning about Moses. Um, so today, if you would like to follow along with me in our workshop, um, you'll just need a few things. So, I'm still recording. Sorry guys, I have never done this before, so it's quite interesting to me. Um, <coughs> uh, so you will need a spark Bible if you have one. I will be reading you the story and showing you the pictures, so don't worry if you don't have the, the um, spark Bible. Um, when we do our joys and concerns, you'll want to have maybe a little candle and some pebbles or a rock or something and a jar um, or a small bowl or container to put your concerns in. Um, we will need a small bowl with water in it, some pepper, and some dish soap. Okay. And we're going to be doing a workshop that we've never done before. It's a digital media workshop. So you guys can ask mom and dad to let you use your tablet or their phone or even the computer and download a free version of Pac-Man. That's right, we're gonna get to play Pac-Man today and um, soon you'll understand why. Um, do we need anything else? Oh, some paper and some coloring supplies would be awesome. So let's start off our time together the way that we normally do in faith exploration and talk about our joys and concerns. Right now, I am sure you are filled with so many concerns. Um, and as adults, we have lots of concerns too. We are not, um, not immune to what's going on in the concerns of the world. And our biggest concern is most definitely you guys. So <laughs> my candles don't seem to be working, which is quite a bummer. Um, hold on, I'm gonna go get some candles that work. So, like I said, I am very new to all of this. And um, there, our candles work, that's much better. Um, I have two sets of candles. One of them had batteries and the other one did not. Um, so I have never made a YouTube video before. This is my first time. So um, it might be a little stop and go. I might have to pause it a couple times, um, but we will get through this together, I promise. So, like I said, we have lots of concerns right now. Let's start with our joys. My joy today is that even though we don't get to be together in person, because we're supposed to be taking a little break socially, um, we still have the opportunity to do this and I still have the opportunity to teach you and um, help you learn a little bit more about Moses and the Bible and um, why we do worship. So I am filled with joy today, even though um, we are not together. Now concerns. We are all very concerned over the coronavirus, I'm sure. Our biggest concern is just being healthy and clean and washing our hands a lot and not spreading germs. That's what we're going to try to do um, over the next few weeks. So I have some pebbles here, and I hope you do too. And I... I'm filled with lots of concerns this week, but I know that God is going to take care of us. I'm sure of it. So... I'm just going to drop all of these into the 
jar. That was very noisy. So why don't you take a minute to light your candle of joy, drop your concern in your bowl or your bucket, and just think for a minute about these things that are weighing on you. And let's take a deep breath in and then out. In and out. And we're gonna pray. Dear God, thank you for the ability for us to still come together in this very new and fun way. I pray that you would help ease all of our concerns, whether it be school or home or work, and all of these things that are filling us with anxiety and fear, help us to just release that and let it go. Put them into your hands, God. I know that you will take care of us and our needs will be met. Be with us with our time together here in this new and different space. And help us get the most out of, out of you and our, our learning of your stories. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, so now we are going to move on to the next part of our lesson. I'm going to set my candles aside and we are going to start talking about Moses again. So I have some notes here. We have our bowl of water our pepper, and our dish soap, okay? So when God separated the Red Sea and made dry land for the Israelites to walk across, it was a miracle. Miracles are things that only God can make happen. I can't make water in a river or a lake move and separate so that we can walk across it. That's something that only God can do we are going to do a demonstration to tell part of Moses' story of the Red Sea. You need a bowl of water, your pepper, and some dish soap. Okay, so you have your bowl of water. I want you to sprinkle in some pepper. See how the pepper floats on the top here? I'm going to show you in just a second what my bowl looks like. Oh, good. You can see a little bit of it. Sorry, the lighting isn't very great here in my dining room. Okay, we have pepper. All right. And then Moses came up to the water with his staff, right? So can, can you see my bowl here a little bit? So there's my pepper. Okay. All right. So Moses raised his staff. This is going to be your staff, okay? And we're going to put a little dish soap on our finger. I haven't done this yet, so we're going to do this experiment together and see how it works. All right, I'm going to rub this dish soap all over my finger. Okay. All right, and we are going to part the sea. All right, we can only do this with God's help, right? All right, ready? We're going to put our staff into the... Oh! Oh my goodness, look at that. Look at that. Do you see how all the pepper dispersed to the side of the bowl? That was really cool. I have never done that experiment before. See? All the pepper moved to the side of the bowl and now it's all falling to the bottom of the bowl. So. You can get a paper towel or something to dry off your finger, right? Okay. Think of how crazy it must have been when all of the Israelites were standing on the edge of the, the Red Sea and there was this huge, huge mass of water in front of them and all of these Egyptian soldiers coming at them from behind. They were scared. They didn't know what to do. And Moses, Moses knew that he just had to ask God for help. And God did help him. Moses was scared too. 
because he, you know, he was worried that he was going to stand up there in front of this big mass of water and say, okay, let us across, and nothing was going to happen. But God parted the waters. I don't know how God parted the waters. I don't know what it looked like when the waters were parted. But I am sure that those Israelites felt some kind of relief when they realized that they were going to be able to escape from the Egyptians that were chasing them. So that was the first part of our lesson today. We sure have an awesome God. I am going to clean up my hands and my bowl, and I will meet you back here in just a second with the next part of our lesson. Hi, welcome to the digital media portion of our workshop this morning. Um, have you ever been in a game of tag? You're running around, you're having fun, and then all of a sudden you're caught in between two people and you don't know which way to go. If you go this way, you're gonna get tagged by this person. If you go this way, you're gonna get tagged by this other person. What are you supposed to do? Which way do you run? Where do you go? That's kind of what happened to Moses and the Israelites. They were running and running, and all of a sudden they hit the, the Red Sea. They, they had to stop, but they knew that someone was coming behind them, chasing them to tag them. So in today's story, we're gonna learn more about that. If you have the Spark Bible, um, the blue one, ah, Okay, we are still recording. I'm not sure how I'm supposed to edit that, but I'll figure that out. Okay, um, so if you have the blue Spark Bible, um, you will open your book to page 86. That's the page that our story is gonna be on. If you have the yellow Spark Bible, I believe it's page 84. And we are going to learn about Moses and the Red Sea. It was a long journey leaving Egypt. The Israelites camped on the shore of the Red Sea. The people were feeling really nervous. Moses squinted into the darkening sky. Okay, so if you have the blue Spark Bible, you're going to open your Bible to page 86. If you have the yellow Spark Bible, I believe you're going to open to page 84. Um, you can follow along with me, or you can just watch the story here. Okay. The Red Sea. I know the picture is not great. See, those are all of the Egyptians chasing the Israelites. It was a long journey leaving Egypt. The Israelites camped on the shore of the Red Sea. The people were feeling really nervous. Moses squinted into the darkening sky. Had he heard something? Something in the distance? Moses shook his head slowly. He did not trust Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, to keep his promise. Do you think Pharaoh followed us? Aaron asked. Moses stood listening. We will see, Moses said. We will see. Moses didn't have to wait long. Soon a growing cloud of dust rose up in the distance. A rumble of horse hooves thundered towards the travelers. They could see them clearly now. Hundreds of Pharaoh's chariots charged towards them. Hundreds of soldiers followed with orders to bring the people back. We're trapped, someone yelled. A strong wind began to blow. Cries went up from the people. Moses, they shouted. Have you brought us here to die? Don't be afraid, Moses told his people. Stand firm. God is with us. Moses gripped the staff in his hand. 
Prepare to move out, he shouted into the wind. Where, Moses, Aaron said. There's no place to go. Through the sea, Moses said. God will make a way. Moses stood on the edge of the shore. He raised his right arm. He stretched his staff out over the white waves. The waters trembled and divided. The wild wind roared. Soon a wall of water stood on the left and the right. Dry land appeared between the walls. A safe path to the other side. Move now, Moses ordered. How strange it must have felt to step onto the sandy path. How scary to feel the spray from the water waiting on either side. Would God save them? Would God keep the promise to Moses? In the morning, Pharaoh's army stood on the Red Sea's shore. They saw the Israelites safe on the other side. Soon chariots groaned and soldiers cracked their whips. Pharaoh's army moved slowly across the rocky and sandy path. They will catch us, a young woman yelled. Watch and wait, said Moses. Moses once again held his staff up over the walls of waves. Tons of water came tumbling down. Horses, chariots, and riders were all swept into the sea. From the safe shore came the sounds of singing and dancing, led by Miriam, Moses' sister. Sing to the Lord, the Israelites shouted. God has saved us. The Israelites were scared. Have you ever been scared? Think about when. What did you do? Okay, so that was a great story and another miracle that Moses performed with the help of God. Okay, so now we're going to get to the fun part of our lesson. Um, what, what kind of miracle did God perform in this story? And why do you think he did that? The Israelites were God's people, right? The Israelites trusted in God and God wanted to... Uh, protect them and help them. What do you think it would have been? Would have felt like to be trapped at the edge of the sea, with all of those soldiers and chariots behind you? It would have been a little scary, right? Today we're going to play a game. Have you ever heard of Pac-Man? So, in Pac-Man, you're this little, this little guy, right? And you're being chased by these little ghosts and they're chasing you and you need to find a way to escape. And you're hopefully going to see a little bit of what it felt like for the Israelites to be chased by the Egyptians and to be stuck with no way out. And where would they go? What would they do? So I have Hartley's tablet here. <laughs> um, and I'm going to... We just downloaded a free version of Pac-Man right onto the tablet. Um, and I can show you here. All right. So. See? Pac-Man. I'm not very good at playing video games. On the tablet, it's very different. You use your finger um, to play the game. Um, so have mom and dad start up your tablet and get your Pac-Man game ready. And we are going to just try it out here for, I don't know, maybe 10 minutes or so. If you want to take about, um, you can pause our video together and take about 10 minutes to go ahead and play some Pac-Man. And when we come back together, I'll have some questions for you about what it was like to play the game. Oh, there's a lot of ghosts up here. Oh. 
So was that a lot of fun? You got to play video games while doing faith exploration. It's an awesome treat. Um, it's hard for us to do workshops like this in faith exploration because we don't have enough tablets to go around for everybody. But hopefully you got a chance to play some Pac-Man for a little bit. Hopefully you didn't overdo it, you know. Um, so what did it feel like to be cornered and trapped and have no place to go? I wonder what the Israelites felt like when they were in that moment trapped. They were stuck between a giant sea and a bunch of angry soldiers. But God knew a way out and saved them by parting the sea and letting the Israelites cross. So now what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to take out um, some coloring paper, all right, and some markers or crayons or colored pencils or whatever your favorite um, thing to color with is. And we are going to draw a picture. I would like you to draw a picture of the parted Red Sea. Okay, so we're going to part the Red Sea. And you're going to have the Israelites cross on the dry land in the Red Sea. But instead of the Israelites being people, I want you to make the Israelites look like little Pac-Men. Okay? And then the Egyptians are going to be the little ghosts that come chasing after Pac-Men. So if you could take some time to draw those pictures. I'm going to have Bentley and Tinsley and Hartley help me with this part of our project. Um, and they're going to draw some pictures of um, Pac-Man and the ghosts um, on the dry land trying to get across the Red Sea. Um, and after you're done with your photos, with your pictures, I would love to see them. So have mom and dad take a picture of them on their phone. Um, and you can send them to me at stephanie at mccsudbury.org. Um, most of your parents probably have my email address, but that would be awesome. I would love to see them. I will print them out or you can bring them in the next time we're able to get together. So why don't you take a few minutes to um, draw your picture and I'm going to ask Bentley and Hartley and Tinsley to help me with drawing um, a picture uh, and um, we'll meet back here in a minute. Mom, do you like my drawing? Yes, it's great. Who were the people that you drew? Um, the Isaac and Ooh, I forgot the P. So is that Moses and Aaron? Yeah. Oh. This is um, Moses and this is Aaron. Okay. Did Moses have a big staff in his hand? Mm, yes. Oh. Nice. What are you drawing, B? Pac-Man. Oh, that's Pac-Man? So those are all the Israelites trying to get away? Um, yeah, I think, like, because this stuff, like, tries to, so, like, when you're way back here, they try to get you. Very cool. Hi, you have your back and you have your picture done. Um, great job. So, um, 
I feel like this story is very appropriate for us right now. Um, we're feeling a little concerned. Maybe we're feeling a little trapped. We're not sure um, what's going to be happening um, with the coronavirus and um, school being closed right now. Um, so we're really unsure about things. And the Israelites were very unsure too, and, and so was Moses. But Moses was a man of faith. Moses believed that God would take care of him and the Israelites. So I want you to remember that God is here for us, and God is going to give us a way out, just like he did the Israelites. That no matter what situation we're in or where we are, that... Um, God has made a promise to us to help us and protect us. And God will do that if we just have faith in him. So I would like to do the Lord's Prayer. It's something that we know. It's something that we do um, in church every Sunday. And um, so we're going we're gonna to do it a little different. We're going to start really, really quiet. And then when we get to the end, we're going to get really, really loud. Okay? So... Let's start out really quiet. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Great job, everybody. This was a very fun experiment. Thank you for bearing with me. And um, maybe next week we'll have fewer technical difficulties. And um, we'll have another lesson ready to go. I would love to do the cooking lesson that I had planned, but the grocery stores were a little full, so I wasn't able to get the breadsticks. But um, we will do this again next week, most likely, and I will send home another supply list for you and your parents to get together. And, oh, don't forget to water your um, resurrection gardens. Do any of you have